And uh, uh, Rogge was very, very prolific. She was the most incredible choreographer. We you know these people have had choreographers. You know, uh, we were having things about choreographers all the time. You know, like you know, we had Cole the last time, but she was incredible, incredible indeed. And what what do you think about her? You think she was doing a good job? Well, well I think that Florence Rogge understood. <laughs> Flo <laughs> Florence, can you hear me? Florence Rogge understood how to use space and how to position her dancers. But she was able to do this because she was very particular about the dancers she chose. There were very specific steps you need to do for the audition. You had to be strong. You had to qu be quick thinking so that if she gave you a combination, you better be able to do it. And not, well, what is she saying? You had to be able to do that. She also could see on the balcony, she could see the stage. And the girl was wearing a wedding band. <laughs> that was because she, no, had no. Good eyes. she had to <laughs> she put tape over it. You know how depressing that is for a newlywed <laughs> to have to put tape over her wedding band? Mm -hmm. Now, Florence Rogge understood dancers. Of course, it hasn't been mentioned, but the Radio City Music Hall did a great deal for ballet. But it was at a time, too, when it was the only place you could get a job as a ballerina, as a ballet dancer. There were a couple of shows, and there was the ballet russe that lasted 20 minutes. But to work at Radio City Music Hall, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. have lunch and dinner. <laughs> right. So that was very important. Yeah. And I guess Florence Rogge is a foreshadowing of the spectacle. But you know what I thought was so wonderful about her is that she could create a ballet. She had to create a ballet every month. Every month, she did this for 20 years. Now that's talent. Some of them weren't terribly good. I mean, like you know, like the garden thing. I mean, <laughs> but she hit it on the nail, uh, the nail on the head, rather, very, very often. She was terrifically clever, and this she did some beautiful ballets. Uh, can you recall some of the ballets? I know the, the Rhapsody in Blue. Yeah, so. Yeah, what else? Bolero. Bolero, Rhapsody in Blue, the Undersea, undersea <laughs> Ballet. Right. The, um, yeah, we did a puppet ballet where we were with strings. We and the garden one. Oh. <laughs> yes, we had. I was a radish. And she was a, a radish. I was a tomato. <laughs> right. <And laughs> yes, we were well right. Yeah, There's always the more tomatoes, tomatoes in the garden than anything else. You get so many tomatoes, you have to give them to the neighbors when they're asleep. You know, you leave them at the doorstep because tomatoes are flourish in the garden, but there were many more tomatoes on stage than anything else. She had, uh, she had one where we were mirror images of each other. It was tough to do, but uh, you had to be exact replicas all the way across. It's not realistic. In a real mirror, you have endless images, but it gave that illusion of us being mirror images of each other. Uh, amazingly, she did. <laughs> I forget I have a microphone. I'm telling you, uh, she was something else. I, if I might add, the ballet did not have a union, so that Florence could get us up at 6 o'clock in the morning for rehearsal, and I lived in Brooklyn, so I used to sleep at the dorm. Because you don't rehearse at 6 o'clock <laughs> in the morning if you live in Brooklyn. Yeah. You have to sleep there. She was a taskmaster. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you girls um, danced. Your, you did your pirouette through the, the war years, actually. You know, They're all the war years girls here. I like to call them the golden girls. It's <laughs> just a little tarnished, <laughs> but still OK. <laughs> Anyway, um, there's one girl here at the table that's remarkable, and her name is Vivian Shears Smith. And she's 90 years old. She's the oldest lady. She has a lovely red jacket. And she wins the prize for the oldest girl. And she doesn't mind it. It's fine. And of course, she wins another prize. You notice that we all held up photographs of ourselves. When she sent me her photograph, I was almost in tears. It is the most beautiful photograph of a dancer I've ever seen. And if you ever ask what it feels like to be a dancer, just look at that picture. Because it is joy and the wonderful joy and freedom you feel when you're dancing.
And it's the only way that Billy Elliot explains it. It's that, it's that feeling. It's in that photograph. It is magical. So you win the prize again. <laughs> <laughs>